hi welcome back guys so i just wanted to share a quick word with you guys the way the lord put it to me was he reminded me about um moses and you know how with moses the entire when god called his name in the wilderness right he said moses moses and moses was curious so he went to go look at the burning bush right god was saying what was the difference to me now anytime god asks questions you know he already knows the answers but he he asked me what was the difference between moses between the ground where moses was already standing and the ground by the burning bush and he said my glory you see god is everywhere but he's not in everything and i know that might not make sense to some but for those that will get it will get it god is everywhere right he created everything he's the creator of everything that we see or the creator of the one who created the things that we see so in that aspect he's the creator of everything that we see but he's not in everything and there was a difference between God saying, there was a different space between God saying, the ground that you, he said, take off your sandals. Now, every place that Moses was standing was ground, right? He was, it was dirt. But there was a difference between the space that was by the burning bush because it was holy. The ground all of a sudden became holy. <laughs> Glory to God. The ground all of a sudden, y'all, became holy in this one spot. This one particular spot. And the Lord was sharing with me and revealing to me how there can't be any mixture. There are so many people, y'all, and I'm talking about pastors preachers teachers prophets whatever whoever who are trying to tell the people of god you know without saying mix they're telling us to mix right they're telling us to compromise our christianity but who do you fear more god or man and sometimes we have to ask ourselves like am i more afraid of people and what they're gonna say and how weird they're gonna call me how strange they're gonna call me and names are gonna call me am i more afraid of people than i am of god and then are you more afraid of the devil than you are of god because there's a certain amount of holiness that is required for the things that god wants to do in the earth there is no difference between me and elijah there is no difference between moses and you except for their holiness and obedience we are living in a time where believers in jesus christ are following falling away rapidly because there is no um there is no there is no requirement of holiness to people like people just doing what they want to do they can claim the name of Jesus Christ and they think it stops at their salvation or the confession of salvation because the salvation really is at the end of at the end of everything are you really saved at the at the end of everything have you been saved because salvation is not a prayer <laughs> salvation is a result right it's the end result of how we lived our lives were you saved right and i needed to come and share this message because it's calling me up higher me up higher there's gonna be people who don't like us y'all they're gonna be people especially people in the world excuse me for spitting but I'm very passionate about what I'm saying right now, seriously. There's gonna be a lot of people in the world who hate us because they first hated him. And especially when we try to walk uprightly before God, it's gonna be a problem for a lot of people, including those in the church. Those in the church who are not living holy lives will have a problem with you 
and your holiness and your consecration and your sanctification before God. And people are going to call you holier than thou. And you might be. You might be holier than they are because you really are walking uprightly before the Lord. You really might be holier than they are because the things that they're doing and choosing to do that are wrong, you're not doing them. So really, in reality, it would make you holy, right? But they're choosing to mix. They're choosing to compromise. There are so many believers who are trying to convince pastors, people of God, who are trying to convince people that it's okay to mix with the world. Don't be so holy. When was that not the requirement? When was not being holy the requirement? Glory to God. When did God ever say, don't be holy for I am holy? Come on, people of God. We got to require some things of ourselves. And matter of fact, we don't have to even require it. If you tired, don't require it. God already required it of you. Of us. We cannot be out here playing around. God is not playing with us. God will not be mocked. That which a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatever he sows, he gonna reap. So if there's anybody with a platform telling you to compromise your holiness, to compromise your Christianity, oh, it ain't no big deal. We need to stop making a big deal. A lot of people, when they fall down, <coughs> We need to learn how to pick people up whenever they fall. We need to stop being these believers in these Christians who don't never want to pick people up when they fall. There is a requirement. Okay? The priests back in the Old Testament could not go to offer the incense without a certain wardrobe on completely from head to toe. Go look it up. Please, people of God, don't take my word for it. In the biblical days, there was a particular wardrobe for, for priests to wear. And there is a hierarchy in the priesthood. You know how in the New Testament it says that we are a king and a priest, a chosen generation? Jesus is also our high priest. And so there was a certain type of priest that was allowed to go. There were lots that were cast. If you're reading the book of Luke chapter 1, there were lots that were cast for the priesthood. And so whoever the lot landed on, there were a group of priests, right? And the priests would be allowed into the temple. Now the people were allowed in the outer courts. And when you look this up, this is such an interesting topic. But when you look this up, there were certain stages that people were allowed to go in. Women in those days were only allowed into the certain outer courts the men however were allowed into the inner courts to pray only but only a certain group of people were allowed to offer sacrifices and incense on behalf of the people people could not just go in and offer sacrifices to god all willy-nilly sir pastor preacher whoever's telling people to mix and don't be taking people god requires holiness And that's the reason that there is a requirement. That's the reason that there's a difference and a separation from you and them, me and, and, and them. That's the reason there's a separation because God requires holiness. You can't just come to him any kind of way. There was a partic particular tunic, golden tunic and, and a, a, a golden um, crown that was required for the priests, the Jewish priests. They could not just walk in, get up off their couch and go offer God a sacrifice. That's not how he operates. And I'm not saying that we are bound by that. But what I am saying is that God is everywhere, but he is not in everybody. And God is everywhere, but he is not in every situation and in every place. And the difference between the ground that Moses was already walking on in the wilderness as he was herding sheep 
and the holy ground that God told him to take his sandals off because Moses hadn't even realized that his environment had even shifted. He didn't even realize that his, his environment, his foundation had changed. He didn't even know. God had to instruct him to take off his shoes. So people of God, when God is telling you to move or do something or shift, trust and believe that he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows why he's doing it. You might not see at the moment, you might not know, but God knows. And it's important to be obedient because God knows. And we don't sometimes, unless he tells us or reveals it to us. And I just wanted to come on here today and just encourage you that no matter what people are saying, I don't care how famous they are. I don't care how rich they are. I don't care how many times they have been caught in scandals and, and bounced back. I don't care how big their church and ministry is. I don't care if the title before their name is Bishop, Prophet, Prophetess, Apostle. I don't care. If they are telling you to mix and compromise your holiness and your Christianity, you better run the other direction. Take heed. And if you have been caught up in being unholy or being unclean, repent. Repent, people of God, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. There is a requirement of holiness. Holiness is, is not optional. Holiness is not optional. If you are going to serve the living God and live for him and die for him, holiness is not optional, people of God. And we have got to be diligent. 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 Because if not, our mouths will get us in trouble. Our eyes will be get us in trouble because we'll be focused on the wrong things. We will not be looking for God. We will not be checking the skies and looking for him and still doing our kingdom assignments if we are not careful. So we must be diligent over our tongue. We must be diligent over our hands. This is just so pressing on my heart the requirement of holiness because there's I, I've seen people telling other believers that they are wrong for um, you know they're being religious they're being too holier than thou you know when they mess up no you just want to live in sin and you cannot live in sin and serve a holy God sin and, and the Holy Ghost cannot take up residence in the same spot. It doesn't matter how much the world and these people with these microphones and platforms and all of these numbers and followers on Instagram, it doesn't matter what they tell you, what lies they tell you. The requirement is still holiness. I'm done. I'm through. Be blessed. Be blessed. Go in peace.